Welcome back to our channel Diaspora UA. Today we have honor to have such famous celebrities, I would say, who are in Ukraine right now and helping Ukraine to defend the freedom. Maria and Gary, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Bogdan, for inviting me. Thank you, Bogdan. Thank you, Maria, for including me in such a distinguished company. Likewise. Thank you, Gary. Before we jump into our question and start uh, some discussion, maybe you can briefly introduce yourself for our viewers. I'm an opera singer and I was born in Germany. Maria Maxako, representative of the famous Maxako artistic dynasty. Maria has several large solo albums released by Universal since 2016. Maria Maxako has been living in Kyiv, Ukraine, where she is a guest performer at the National Opera of Ukraine and other cities. I'm a retired U.S. Naval officer and I was born in Russia. But I'm now I'm in Ukraine and uh, both Maria and I were fighting for uh, Ukrainian independence, freedom, and uh, trying to get Ukrainians as many weapons as possible to defend their beautiful land. Despite such different and very successful careers, you have one thing in common. You both love Ukraine and as I know from day one, of this horrible war trying to do everything possible and impossible to help Ukrainian people defend their country. Gary, how would you estimate the situation on, on right now in Ukraine in the front line? The situation is quite difficult. I'm not going to pretend. The Ukrainian people are embracing themselves for a major Russian offensive. As you can see, the lighting is very poor. Uh, today, where I am, there was no electricity practically all day, and there's no heat, so it's quite cold uh, right now in Ukraine. And I know where Maria is, is also quite cold. And uh, also, we couldn't connect right now with her because she was out of electricity. So things are at the front, uh, getting soldiers are getting prepared to repel a Russian offensive. And um, I never swore allegiance to Ukraine. I was uh, never a commissioned officer in Ukraine, but it's, therefore I don't really have to be here. Uh, I could be in Miami and I wouldn't be here if I did not believe that the Ukrainians will repel this offensive and will kick Russian butt hard. This time, even though their, uh, the support that they're getting from the West from the civilized world, in my opinion, and I think we all share it, is minimum. It should be more. Today, I read in the news from a Polish ambassador that uh, Russia started new offensive, and it's a race against time to arm Ukraine for new Russian more serious offensive. Is it true, and how we can deal with it? Because uh, as far as we know, that uh, Biden's team tanks promised. Uh, earlier can be delivered in a year what do you think what's your opinion and what we can do for that Maria? what can we do we could draw the attention of the west to the necessity of larger quantity of weapons that ukraine needs badly at the moment it's very dramatic the situation because some weapons that were promised are so to say on the way but that lasts very long periods of time. And what could be the salvation of these really big and tough problems is the Land Lease Act. The Land Lease Act was, uh, I think Gary would be more precise, but as far as I can say, it was voted by a supermajority of the U.S. Congress in April 2022, and it was signed by President Biden on the 9th of May. And that is the way how a very large amount of weaponry be delivered to Ukraine, all what is necessary, without making an additional effort on the taxpayers, on the American economy right now, because all these weaponry was created in previous decades. And by the way, it was paid by the U.S. taxpayers of previous decades, and now if it is not going to be used in term to help Ukraine, and if it's not going to be used to gain the victory, it means that in previous decades, all this weaponry was made in a way in vain. It did not serve the purpose it was made for. And the purpose was to fight, if necessary, against the Soviet Union. And now Russia 
which now, of course, is only inheriting the positive moments of Soviet Union. But in fact, it has also inherited all the weaponry of Soviet Union. And I would like to ask Gary to say more about it, about the Budapest Memorandum. That's the moment when Ukraine gave away the nuclear potential. And that's why United States were standing always defending the borders and the sovereignty of Ukraine. And now, right now, we are really in high necessity of all this weaponry that is on uh, conservation. And if that would be used, this would be probably the right answer considering the Budapest Memorandum and the <laughs> Land Lease Act. That means the brave Ukrainian army, the heroic Ukrainian people will gain as soon as Ukraine has enough weapons. I think that the price will be the, lower it for would be gained very quickly. Right, right. And, and, and uh, the quicker it will be, the less casualties, the less people will get killed, the less people will lose their homes because what Russians are doing, they're wiping the cities right off the face of the earth, the ones that they're saying they're liberating. And uh, there, there's a quite a large amount of people are just being killed in, in Ukraine and being wounded. And many people are dying from stress because they lost absolutely everything from cold, from sickness, from hospitals are being overwhelmed. And uh, yes, you're absolutely right, Maria. The Budapest Memorandum assured Ukrainians and First of all, the United States and European Union assured the, the Ukrainians that if they give up nuclear weapons to Russia, uh, then uh, we will do absolutely everything possible in our power to protect Ukrainian borders. And we haven't done that when the Crimea war is annexed. And we haven't done that uh, when the war in Donbass started. Everything was dragged out. Everything was slow not to upset Putin, not to provoke him. Uh, let him uh, intimidate us and let him hold us hostage with his nuclear uh, weapons. And it's, uh, I believe it is a weak leadership on our part. And of course, Europeans are watching what we're doing. And uh, not enough weapons are going quickly enough. As we promised once, we promised things get changed. We pull back. Uh, we extend that. The Europeans are also not uh, trying to accept Great Britain and Poland, those two countries are deaf and Baltic states. They're definitely doing more than their share of helping the uh, Ukraine. But you're absolutely right. <clears throat> the, that way, the land lease was the bill was passed in April and was signed into law by President uh, Biden. Now, while by supermajority, 100% of Senate and 95% of Con uh, lower house, of House of Representatives, the entire Congress voted for, for land lease and it was signed into law. So why vote for it and sign it into the law and then not use it is, uh, is somewhat uh, mind boggling for all of us. We don't, none of us understand. And um, now that we American people demand from our government to execute the United States law to bring it. And this is why we're uh, having demonstrations in front of the White House and all across the country, people who are not indifferent to, you, to Ukrainian suffering. And from what you're saying, Bogdan, uh, those pe the, these people are being discouraged to, to exercise uh, our right, exercise to what, to what I serve, to what I pledge the allegiance to to express uh, our demand from our government, right or wrong, every, it's everybody's opinion, but we have that right. And for uh, what you're saying, it is Ukrainian officials that are saying not to exercise the very right they're fighting for, telling us not to exercise that uh, by, by having a demonstration and demanding from, regardless what country this is, it is our right to demand from our government to, exercise the law to exercise the law that they themselves signed into the law so to me it's mind-boggling what you're saying is just not comprehensible by me but also i uh, think that ukrainians uh, uh, trying to pass that on as though we're supporting putin by by saying that ah you see the west is not helping you west is just promising you but really sacrificing ukraine to the russians by not providing the weapons this is i just want to make a, a statement a strong statement on behalf of all of us this is not what we're saying 
The West is helping Ukraine. The West is giving weapons, collective West, with the United States. Our, our complaint or our dissatisfaction is that it's not enough and it's not quickly enough. It's not that. And that costs Ukrainians' lives every day. Somebody's son and daughter are dying. Somebody's husband, somebody's father, somebody's mother. They're losing everything every day. Hundreds of people, thousands of people, ten thousands of people are, are, you know, ten million refugees are suffering because the West, as traditionally, is very, very slow. And of course, that aircraft is turning around very slowly. But once it will turn around, uh, definitely Ukraine will wipe uh, this uh, cult of death by the KGB thug of the face of the earth. And this is what we're trying to help. We're not trying to play up to Putin, whose propaganda is that West is not helping Ukraine. West is helping Ukraine. We're just demanding that it would be quicker and more. So those people who are discouraging us from it, I think are being wrong. They're wrong. They don't understand the value, American values that we all share, that we should not let people get killed. We should not just stand by and watch that and uh, and, and by, by all means support that. We should protest and we should do be active about it. And we are being active about it. So I do encourage people to go and exercise their American right to protest, to speak, and uh, us not being shut down. And as we know, those liberal people or people that call themselves Democrats and liberals and open-minded, they're trying to shut us down. They're trying to shut down my channel. They're trying to, they did just shut down our friends channel, the continent channel down on YouTube. And we know that Newsmax is being shut down on the platform. The one that is, uh, uh, you know, it's a pro Republican. So this is not a democratic society. This is not a democratic values for which we all fight and defend and swear allegiance to. And this is what, Ukrainian people are fighting for. I would like to emphasize that um, I love America very much. American people are fantastically warm-hearted. I was really shocked in a good way because uh, especially coming from Eastern European countries, we not always see that um, warm-heartedness around us. And uh, really, I thank so much the American people for helping Ukraine. And the help is immense, but it is those packages. And it does make an additional burden on American economy. And that means that every time, every, more, every month and every package that has to be voted by the Congress, it is a burden anyhow. And even though I know that Americans support Ukraine greatly and that they share it uh, with love, still there is a way how not to make an additional burden on American taxpayer, taxpayers and at the same, in the same time to uh, help Ukraine and to give Ukraine everything necessary in larger amounts, in much larger amounts than right now by the packages, and much quicker. There is no limit in, in that type of uh, help. I'm talking about the Land Lease Act. And maybe some of our viewers remember the Land Lease Act in uh, the World War II, when the Land Lease practically helped all the countries like Great Britain and Soviet Union to, to win the war. And all of them, Churchill, as well as Zhukov and Stalin, everyone admitted that there wouldn't be a victory without land lease. We all know how much America to help in that terrible war. Same thing right now. I know that American people want to help and want to help immensely. The point is that many think that they are already helping and the land lease was uh, passed the uh, Congress and was signed into law by president and everything. Everyone thinks that it is acting, it is, it is doing the job, but it's not. Unfortunately, nothing, nothing was gained by land lease. At the moment, still nothing, nothing at all. And that is why I think that the situation with land lease is a win-win situation. When something that is not going to be used anyway in any other battle 
could help Ukraine right now to win the war. And that would be our common victory. And I ask very much, I beg in a way, the American people not to stay aside, not to be indifferent to that particular moment, because everyone can get maybe tired of uh, the long war. But think about the Ukrainians that are fighting right now, notwithstanding the winter t- terms and times and it is hard to fight when there is not enough weaponry the point is should there be land lease in action right now the victory will be quick and uh, another thing we really need american people to join the action to join the uh, demonstration on the, the 12th february at 13 p.m. because as Gary mentioned, there are some strange opinions somewhere and some people are told not to go because it can spoil the relationship between United States and Ukraine, which is not true. I think the contrary, uh, that it would uh, even tighten the relationship. It would even uh, make it more um, the victory it would be a common victory. It would be a common result of Absolutely. our all efforts. So I I must ask American people to come and join the meeting on the 12th of February because that's the only uh, thing we can count on. Yes, yes. and uh, uh, Maria said um, that uh, on 12th of February in front of the White House, we have a traditional demonstration uh, requesting that land lease be released to Ukraine. And she said that uh, 13 p.m. She meant 1, 1 p.m., but 1300 is because of my military influence on her. She's speaking military language, 1300. And for those who are civilians, it's at 1 p.m. Now, I'm somewhat perplexed and shocked by what Bogdan is saying, that Ukrainian officials are discouraging Americans to go and exercise their right to protest and their, uh, their right to voice their their opinion, uh, regardless of what it is. And I do encourage, uh, I mean, I'm shocked. I, don't, I just don't believe that this is possible in today's world, but who knows? All Therefore, I encourage the Ukrainian diaspora, the people who are not indifferent, to show up this Sunday and to support Ukrainian people in their struggle. I particularly, particularly want to address my brothers and sisters in arms, the veterans, the Ukrainian Veteran Association, Jewish Veteran Associations, American Legion Association, to go and show your support to our brothers and sisters in arms. Remember, we all swore to defend those who cannot fight for themselves. Ukrainians can fight for themselves, and they're showing a great courage, and they're putting up a great fight against the force that is much larger than theirs. So let's help them. Let us not be intimidated by anybody, anybody, officials or not officials. We defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Nobody can tell us not to go and to exercise our right to express ourselves. It's a First Amendment that we defend. So therefore, my brothers and sisters in arms, do not be intimidated by some clerks, officials. So thank you. Thank you very much for your support. Thank, thank you, Gary, for such a great words. And uh, on our meetings, we thank American people for support and uh, also ask President Biden's team uh, use land lease for Ukraine. It would save money for American taxpayers and also will help Ukraine to save thousands of lives and defend their home, their country. One more time, it's peaceful meeting. There is no any action that's against the law or anything else. We're not planning any any like active protest or anything. And we did it three times. Unfortunately, the media is not covering it for some reason. Also, I would like to ask you how activating land lease would benefit both Ukraine and United States. Very short. It will save lives. It will save lives of brave Ukrainian uh, warriors and Ukrainian citizens, civilian citizens, and the destruction of uh, infrastructure. It will save our souls as a human beings. Why do you think both American and Ukrainian officials stopped uh, talking about land lease? Just... I don't know. I, they're politicians. 
and uh, they have their own games that they're playing for their benefits, uh, for, for political gains. I don't know. And by the way, I just want to clarify, requesting and calling people to have a peaceful and legal demonstration to express uh, their views and their beliefs. That's all. I'm not calling to take up arms and, be, and attack White House or, or Capitol. That, that is, I know that people will twist again, those journalists or those, uh, those creeps uh, that they're doing it to get likes or, or views or whatever. I don't know about that. I don't know, Maria, why they're doing it or what they're doing. All I know is that we, uh, to, in order to save our souls, in order to, to, to be on the right side of history, we have to defend all of us. All of us have to be Ukrainians today. All of us have to be on the Ukrainian side and stop, stop the killing. I think that American people are fantastically wise people because we can see films that show us the depth of understanding of everything that's happening in the world. For example, there is a movie, <clears throat> Don't Look Up, and that's what I want to say right now. It's not only the moral part, but we have to realize that the uh, um, aggression from Putin is very unsafe to the whole world. At the moment, Ukraine is fighting and Ukraine does not ask for soldiers to come and fight instead of us. Ukraine is fighting, Ukraine is asking for weapons, and there is plenty of weaponry that wouldn't cost anything, that would only be provided to Ukraine, that stands at the moment thousands and thousands and thousands, tens of thousands, probably Harry, Gary will tell more correct about how much weaponry is there on conservation right now. And it is not only the fact that a moral to stay aside when somebody is fighting, it's also the point of um, understanding of possible next steps that should never, n never, ever come. I mean, Ukraine must win and Ukraine will win. Ukraine needs only more help, more, we more weaponry, because Putin is not going to stop. This is something that everyone has to understand. He is not going to use right now, right away, right away nuclear bombs or something like that. He is going just to ruin further and further and further Europe and so on. And it's about values. It's about living in a free world, in a democratic world. That's about defending the values. And that's about not letting the enemy go any further. That's why I think it's a win-win story. And Ukraine will win together with United States. Only give us, please, more weapons. Yeah, for, for those viewers who are not aware, uh, Ukrainian diaspora is holding a meeting in support of land lease for Ukraine since uh, January 1st uh, and every other Sunday at 1 p.m. in front of the White House. And our next meeting will be held at 1 p.m. on February 12th at the same place. Uh, land lease wouldn't uh, put any pressure on American uh, budget. So because uh, weapons already was made and it, uh, United States can use previous generation weapons, as I understand, it will save money for American taxpayers and it will help Ukraine to save thousands of life and defend their homes. And also, also, I, I would tell people that please do not listen to disinformation saying that Ukraine doesn't need land lease. It's not beneficial for Ukraine to have land lease. Well, lease will cost a lot of money to, to Ukraine. None of it is true. And basically you have to ask yourself two questions. Why was land lease beneficial to Soviet Union and Great Britain during World War II and not beneficial to Ukraine? And why, if there is no need for land lease, President Zelensky travels in Europe and uh, asks for more weapons. So th th these two questions, and if you get the answer for them, please share it with us. Till then, we cannot answer those questions. Therefore, we're demanding that land lease, uh, that, uh, that the United States law be executed. Exactly. Thank you so much uh, for sharing your valuable idea as uh, ex-military. Yeah. Thank you, Bogdan. And Impression. again, I want to encourage, again, I can't stress enough, my brothers and sisters of Ukrainian uh, uh, veterans associations, 
uh, Jewish Veterans Association, any Veterans Association to join us on the 12th of February, do not be intimidated. Do not. We, we, we're, we're still fighters. We still should fight for the right cause. And this is in Ukraine is the right cause. That's right. Maria, would you like to add some words before we finish in the interview? Maybe I forgot to ask something. I hope that all our efforts are not in vain. The demonstrations took place every day. They began on the 1st of January and every day people were coming today and yesterday and almost already one and a half months. That means that there are those fighters, those heroes that are trying to change the world for the better. And I hope very much that there will be not few of us on the 12th of February. The only thing I am dreaming about is that the Land Lease Act will be unblocked, released, and that there will be enough weaponry for Ukraine. And that on the 12th of February, there will be many and many of our friends who are also fighting for Ukraine who are not indifferent, who are not staying aside. Thank you very much. Yes, and uh, I want to add that uh, right now it's a race against time, whether the Russian offensive is going to go and whether Ukrainians are going to be armed enough to defend and repel and go into counter offensive. But as they say that time is money, this time, time is lives, lives, Ukrainian lives. So it's not even just money. It's just it's it's a human life. It's somebody's daughters, sons, husbands, parents. So please, please uh, uh, give support. And I want to thank you, Bogdan, for inviting uh, me. I want to thank you for being a voice to the Ukrainian diaspora in the United States or across the world, for that matter. And I want to thank you, Maria, for being such encouragement to all of us because you're the only one that remained in Ukraine. You didn't take your child out. You're staying in Ukraine, although probably any opera theater or any opera in the world would be delighted to have you. But you're remaining in Ukraine and you're staying with Ukrainian people and you, you're encouraging soldiers to fight for this uh, beautiful land. Thank you, Maria and Gary, for all you do to help Ukraine. And thank you for spending your, uh, time with us. It's a big honor. And I just would like to remind uh, our viewers, the big media not uh, covering this meeting. So I would like to ask you to share this video with your friends, with your family, and ask them to support our peaceful meeting in front of White House on February 12 at 1 p.m. with your presence, if you can. We would really appreciate it. You watch Diaspora UA, please share and subscribe if you think this video is valuable. Thank you. Stand with Ukraine. Glory to Ukraine. Glory to the Ukrainian fighters.